Please uh, take your seats, please, and I would like to call this meeting to order uh, the regular meeting agenda number one. Regular meeting agenda number two, I'm going to ask Mr. Perez and the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Will all please rise and thank you. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Please rise and we do have the invocation by uh, Pastor Obed uh, Jimenez from El Divino Reventor Church. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Please join me in prayer this evening. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, thanking you for all your blessings, for your goodness, for your kindness. Thank you because you've blessed our city, our community, in very many special ways, and we are so grateful to you. Thank you for the events that we've had this weekend, Father. We've enjoyed the events, and thank you because everything turned out great, and we give you the honor and the glory. I thank you for every person that was involved in some way or another, and I pray that you give them the strength now to continue to work hard, Lord, as we serve our community. We understand that we're all servants, and as servants, we have great privileges, but we also have great responsibilities. I pray that you allow us to perform those responsibilities, Lord, with integrity, with honor, and that everything that we do be pleasing unto you and bring you honor and glory. I pray that you continue to bless our city, our committee, our leaders. Let us uh, always, everything that we do, let, it, let, let us do it to the best of our abilities to honor and and glorify you. Thank you for everything, Lord. Bless this meeting. Uh, everything that is decided and, and talked about here, let it be get led by you. All this we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Should have the picture for the picture. Thank you so much. Thank you for the inspiring. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Regular meeting agenda number three, uh, Ms. Lerma. Mayor and Council, this proclamation is for Personal Self-Defense Awareness Month, and the proclamation reads as follows. For as January has been designated as Personal Self-Defense Awareness Month with the purpose of educating citizens, especially women and teens, about realistic self-defense options that could very well save their lives, and whereas self-defense is the best way of protecting ourselves, through personal self-defense education and training, we can be empowered with the right knowledge and the correct tools to stop a potentially life-altering event and pre prevent the event offensive criminal act from negatively impacting our lives. And whereas self-defense is not fighting, self-defense is getting away as safely as possible. It is about applying quick thinking and de-escalating methods to the situation in order to get away. Whereas fear is not real, it is a product of thoughts you create. Don't be mistaken, danger is very real, but fear is a choice. Defend yourself and you will be safe for today. Teach yourself to defend yourself and you will be safe for a lifetime. Now therefore, we the City Council of the City of Mission do hereby proclaim the month of January 2020 as Personal Self-Defense Awareness Month, proclaimed on this 27th day of January 2020. Mayor, I'm going to approve. We have a motion on the floor. Do I hear a second? We have a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Uh, motion carries. The proclamation has been declared. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Do we have anybody uh, to receive the proclamation? or? Yes. yes. 
your name and ad address for the record, please. And yes, sir. Uh, okay. My name is Sigal Luis Garcia. Uh, I'm a karate instructor. What I teach is a martial art from Hawaii. We call it Kahu Kembo. Uh, I want to say thank you for the given opportunity to put safety for the community. And last year I was here where my students went to compete in Las Vegas. This year my students will go to Hawaii. Wow. You know, and thank you for the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Sir. Uh, let's shall we take a picture over here. Come over. You have the proclamation, Mr. Sign. Now I will call regular meeting agenda item number four. Mr. Perez, would you pre preface the, the agenda item, please? We do have uh, a representative here for uh, Midago County uh, Service Agency, Ms. Marla Mesa. If you can uh, please uh, come forward. Mm -hmm. And also Mr. Jaime Longoria. Oh, yes, Mr. Longoria as well. Thank you. Before you talk, let me, let me advise the public where, where you're coming from, okay? Uh, the City of Mission had the option to uh, appoint one individual, a citizen from Mission, to represent us at the Hidalgo County level. And uh, Ms. Mesa was uh, was uh, selected to represent the City of Mission. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. Congratulations, Thank Ms. Mesa. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Marla Mesa, and I am here today to talk about the Hidalgo County Community Service Agency and the services it provides to the residents of Hidalgo County. Um, as we already introduced Mr. Longoria, he's the executive uh, director of that agency, um, and he was kind enough to be with me here today. So I have had the privilege of serving on the Hidalgo County Community Service Advisory Board for almost a year, representing the great city of Mission. In that time, I have witnessed how efficient, dedicated, and diligently the agent agency works to reach as many as people as they can. The four main programs available through the agency um, include, let me get it. so the Comprehensive Energy Assistance Program, which is utility assistance for low-income families, um, Community Service Block Grant Program, the Block Grant Program is designed to I'm sorry, is designed to address the needs of those living in poverty, also the senior corp, and that entails uh, several um, programs for the senior citizens, like senior companion, retired citizen, senior volunteer program, and the foster grandparent gr program. Um, and the last one is Operation Bravo Zulu, utility assistance program for honorably discharged veterans living in Hidalgo County. Um, and I wanted to show you numbers that specifically correlate with residents here of Mission. Um, so in sharing those numbers, 1,608 households in the 78572, 73, and 74 zip codes were served and an average of $600 per household. So that equals to $964,800 in assistance that went to the city of Mission. Um, so these households are comprised of about 3,885 individuals. And to give you an idea of how Mission um, fits in with the entire program, Mission residents make up about 17.11% of all Hidalgo County clients served by the agency. And so I was going to let Mr. Longoria give you a little bit more information on the programs and then answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Ms. Mesa. Uh, Mr. Mr. Longoria? I know you're no stranger to Mission Texas, so welcome anyway. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you, Mayor, first of all, thank you so much for the invitation, and thank you to the council members for entertaining this. Um, 
I kind of uh, appear before uh, a dais for a living, and I'll tell you that I'm more nervous today than I've been in, uh, in my 56 years of being alive. <laughs> and that's because I'm coming home. Yeah. It's a homecoming for me. Um, as, as Ms. Mesa and the mayor mentioned, my name is Jaime Lugori. I'm the director of the Hidalgo County Community Service Agency. Uh, about a year ago, we reached out to the city of Mission and asked the city to appoint a representative to the board. Uh, we have an advisory board that advises Commissioner's Court and advises me on the, on the policy decisions really that affect uh, the, the low-income families of Hidalgo County. Ms. Mesa has stepped up and is doing a, a fantastic job of representing not only Mission, but really the low-income families of, of the county. As she mentioned, we have four main programs, our utility assistance program that everyone knows us for, okay? Uh, we serve about 10% of the eligible population in the county. Uh, that's all the funding that we receive. So uh, we do our best to stretch that funding from uh, as far west as Sullivan City and as far uh, east as Heidelberg. Uh, we reach about, like I said, about 9% 9, 9 of the eligible families. And uh, we try to help as, as many of those families that are struggling with putting food on the table and buying the medications that they need. Uh, one of the other programs that I wanted to highlight to you all was uh, probably uh, the best kept secret in, in all of Hidalgo County, and that's our, our family support program. We all know and have come across families that are struggling to get a GED, uh, get, you know, get better job skills, get a better job, uh, finish high school, finish college, uh, finish community college or vocational school, but in a lot of times uh, there's barriers. Uh, transportation, they can't afford uh, babysitting, they can't afford some of the equipment that goes with that. Believe it or not, there's, uh, we had a teacher that came in that, couldn't have, that finished her undergrad but couldn't afford to take the test couldn't afford the fee for the test. We have folks all the time that come to us that, have, that would like to become welders and be certified welders, but they can't afford the tuition. So Hidalgo County has a program through our family support program that can assist those families that just need that extra, that extra push, okay, if you will. Uh, it's, it's case management, it's very intensive kind of work because we take families where they are, we do, an, we do a, uh, a review of all of where they're at, and then we have to really address those particular barriers. And we're proud to say the, state, uh, the state's goal for us last year was 66 uh, individuals to transition out of their income situation. And we transitioned last year, we transitioned 85 individuals. So uh, those, those families in Mission, there's actually, uh, I wanted to, to personalize this for you. And, and just to give you a, a brief, uh, a brief sketch of, of, of what this entails. We had a family that came to us that was earning $10,200. Uh, the breadwinner was trying to go to barber school, wanted to become a barber. We, we took over the case uh, December 30th of, of, of last year. We actually transitioned them. The net increase in their, in their salary was $15,320. So they're at 139% of federal poverty. We had a gentleman who came to us that wanted to be an LVN that was earning $13,764. We transitioned them through our program, we assisted, and uh, now that gentleman is earning $46,420. So we have fa five families like that right here in Hidalgo, right here in Mission, that have uh, transitioned, what we consider transition out of poverty. And uh, we're real excited. It's, uh, uh, you know, I'm proud to say that uh, Adela Ortega here for Mission uh, calls me once in a while with families to, to refer to us. And there's been other department heads that have called me and asked me to, uh, to see if there's any way that we can get assistance. I know Joanne Longoria has, has been instrumental in calling our office as well. So I would urge uh, those of you uh, decision makers to continue uh, encouraging that kind of behavior from your, from your department heads and your department leaders and, and uh, helping us to do a, a better job of addressing poverty here in Hidalgo. County. May I, with your permission, I'd entertain any, any questions or... I'll open up for any of the council members. Do you have any specific questions or, or uh, you know, I did ask him to come over so, that, so the public has, uh, and the council will know that uh, Ms. Mesa has given us a, a year of service and in, in good standing and, and with great achievements and, and, uh, and serving our, not only the citizens of Mission but also the, the county of Hidalgo in, in a way. Uh, Mr. Redline, do you have any... I mean, just a uh, business card or contact info. Absolutely. I've got some bags for you all. I'd like to leave some bags. I also have some applications that I can leave with you all, and you can circulate them to the department heads. Uh, you know, on behalf of Commissioner's Court, uh, I'd certainly like to thank you for, for the appointment. And, uh, you know, it's people like, uh, like Marla that step up and that help us uh, do a better job of, of addressing poverty here in the county. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you any questions, Mr. Plata? Uh, no, just thank you. I think it was a 
awesome story for us to hear this afternoon. Thank you very much for your amazing work and dedication. And I know that in order uh, for all of us to do a great uh, job for our constituents, we need to have the passion and the love. And I see that even though, Marla, you're volunteering, I see that this is like a special calling for you. And thank you, sir, very much for all your years of dedication with this agency um, and helping our, our people. Those were awesome stories from 13,000 to 46,000. I'm sure you changed and you touched that family. Yeah, just as a side note, we got a family that was earning zero, and they're at eighty-eight thousand dollars. Wow, that's amazing! That's Incredible even amazing. Change. Incredible. Let, change. Let's move over here so we can be able to take a picture for the record and, and for history. You know. The okay. I'll give Mr. Longoria a little, a few minutes to distribute the bags. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will call regular meeting agenda item number five, and uh, in replace of Ms. Longoria, well, Ms. Ms. Lerma, you're, you have the podium. Yes, Mayor and Council, uh, Ms. Longoria had to leave on a family emergency today, so we've been talking about census for the last 12 months, and uh, it's right around the corner. It is officially 44 days, 5 hours, 11 minutes, and 4 seconds, and it's changing here. Hidalgo County has a great website that is um, certainly doing the countdown for the, the, the big day, which uh, begins on March the 12th, is the response day. So we want to urge all of the citizens um, to make sure that they're counted. As we heard here today, the Community Service Agency, um, they talk about all the funds they receive, they talk about how they help people, and that's why the, the, the census is important, because it, it talks about money, and it appropriates money for our area, and we want to make sure that everyone in the City of Mission is counted. It's important, it's easy, and it's safe. And it is our responsibility to make sure that, that we are counted. Unidos contamos. We want to make sure that everybody is ready. The big day is March the 12th. Yes. And as a mayor, I want to ask the community to uh, please be ready on that day and come out and, and, uh, and all of you, all of you, uh, register for the census because not only for the, in behalf of the city of Mission, but also for the school districts and other, and other agencies, that, including the county of Hidalgo, Back to this, the the kind of programs that Mr. Longoria and Ms. Mesa just mentioned that uh, that brings more more funding for us and we'll be able to help help more people. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, ma'am. A regular meeting agenda item uh, uh, number six presentation by the Planning Department, Mr. Acevedo. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, if we can get the projector up. The Planning Department is committed to providing a high quality of life by ensuring properly designed and constructed infrastructure for those who work and reside in the City of Mission. The conditions of the streets, sidewalks, driveways, storm drainage, water, and sanitary sewer facilities play an integral part in the everyday life of citizens, motorists, and pedestrians. By responsibly designing, constructing, and maintaining a quality infrastructure, the City of Mission reduces its financial burden from personal injuries and da damage to property caused by premature failure of facilities and increase our economic foundation. The Standards Manual for Public Infrastructure Improvements will propose to assist planners, designers, engineers, and architects during the development of infrastructure improvements and in public rights-of-ways by standardizing the design criteria. 
For easy access, the standards manuals will be provided online once it's completed. As the council may be aware, the standards manual was recently uh, approved on December 16, 2019 at a cost of $29,925. I will note that the original standards manual that we have in place uh, was done or created on January the 1st of 1988, uh, 31 years. So uh, while it had been um, amended here and there, uh, we are in, in need of creating a new one at this time. The areas that the standard manual addresses are the pavement designs for streets, driveways, and commercial parking areas, the drainage designs, the water designs, the sanitary sewer designs, traffic control policy, and the drainage policy. With regards to the drainage policy, we're revising the 10-year storm frequency to a 50-year storm frequency. It also includes the traffic impact analysis policy, and we are adding four components this time around. The pretreatment grease trap facilities policy, the cross-connection and backflow prevention policy, the permeability areas in commercial parking areas, and the landscaping requirements in both commercial and residential areas. These are all four new components that we're adding to the standards manual. And if there's something that the council would like to add, uh, we can certainly address that. Uh, we did have our first meeting with uh, Milo Salinas. Uh, as I said earlier, the contract was approved by the council December the 16th. Um, he has been working with the purchasing department and has since finalized that contract. And we had our first meeting about two weeks ago with Milo. The ultimate goals of the standard manual are to maintain a high standard for improvements within public rights of ways, maximize the integrity of public facilities, maximize the protection of motorists and pedestrians, minimize the inconvenience to pedestrians, motoring traffic, and landowners adjacent to public right of ways, and to maximize the future maintenance costs of the city. This is uh, what our taxpayer money is going towards. Uh, it's, a, it's something that's well needed. Uh, it's over 31 years old. So um, we're looking forward to, to providing the citizens with a new and updated standards manual. Thank you, Mr. Um, uh, Sabedo. Thank you. Uh, I'll call for regular meeting agenda item number seven. Uh, Ms. Enriquez. Uh, Hi, good evening, Mayor and City Council. Okay. So tomorrow, uh, UTRDB Small Business Development Center will be available at the Chamber from 9 a.m. to noon. And uh, this is a resource that we have available for our current Chamber members who are business owners and also prospective one, prospectives who would like to open up a business. And we have also added five new workshops in the business development efforts, uh, and we'll be sharing those uh, updates with our membership in our next newsletter, and they are implemented throughout the year. And of course, this Thursday, we are hosting our Buenas Tardes Luncheon, uh, featuring um, Julian Alvarez, which is our Texas Workforce Commission. And we do have limited seats available, but the cutoff date will be tomorrow at noon. So we urge anybody to secure their tickets if they haven't already. Next Wednesday, we are hosting our monthly tourism meeting at the Chamber, and our occupancy numbers for 2019 year are in for the City of Mission. So uh, last year, in 2019, including all four quarters, uh, we were at 62.5% of occupancy, and that is comparable to 49.9%, which was the year before. So we are up 25% um, in the City of Mission for hotel occupancy. So we're really excited about that. And uh, we're going to continue our efforts in promoting our hotels as we continue. So, Good job. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. Any questions to the chamber? Uh, please uh, uh, deliver the message to your board members and everybody that assisted you. And this past weekend, the, the chamber was wonderful in, in, uh, in the partnership that we have for the Texas Citrus Fiesta. Uh, I've all I've heard is positive comments. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Regular meeting agenda item number eight, uh, Mr. Perez. Uh, departmental reports are are there on your in your computer. So, is there any questions, anytime, anything that you need to address to the department heads at this time? Motion. I move for approval, Mayor. We have a motion on the floor to approve the departmental report, and I have a second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Uh, motion carries, and I'll call for regular, regular meeting agenda item number nine, citizens' participation. Uh, Mr. Hernandez, uh, has anybody signed? Okay. A 
I'm here to brag, Mayor. <laughs> I'm here to brag um, because we had a wonderful, wonderful festivity, uh, or festivities actually, this weekend. And uh, hats off to the Texas Citrus Fiesta for, for organizing these activities and for ensuring that, you know, the 80,000 plus people that came to Mission certainly had a good time and uh, were well received in our community. But today, really, I'm here to commend our parks team under the direction of Brad Benson and Pete Lopez. We have the gentleman here that built the city's 2020 float. We ask him to come to the podium, please. I, so absolutely. I want to recognize them by name. So our carpenters and designers of the float were Fernando Luna, René Magallan, Pásenle para acá, por enfrente, por favor. Nicolás, Nicolás Veo, Ubaldo García, Jesus Mario Garcia and the decorators and the fruit and vegetable slicers because they had all the heavy intents of making sure that it was well represented for Fiesta was Gustavo Garza, Joel Gonzalez and Ricardo Garcia. First place. For the product show, first place. Congratulations. Mr. Benson. I could say a few words. I will open the, the I'll give you the opportunity to speak, Ms. Ochoa. And Thank you. You know, um, not many people know this story, but six years ago when I won, I was so excited and thrilled because ever since I was little, my parents have always taken me to the festivities of the Tex Citrus Fiesta. That has been a tradition in our family since we we're little. Uh, but unbeknownst to me, when I wanted to ride the float, because I think we, I won in May and then in January is when the festivities came, I was informed that we don't ride on floats. And so that was very surprising to me. Um, so that first year, um, I created my own float with help with somebody that I found that does the the floats in Hidalgo and then we worked with Brad that next year uh, because City Council thought that it was such a wonderful idea and so ever since then it's been five years that you all have been doing a wonderful job and you all surpass the float each year it just gets better and better um, this year I hadn't seen at all I hadn't seen it until that that afternoon and it was just it's just beautiful thank you so much for your hard work um, and dedication. I know that that takes talent and your talent obviously uh, shine through because we got first place and I know that next year is just going to be even better. So thank you for that, for starting a, tra a tradition for us here on council now. Um, at first we all would bring our children and all that, but then it got too hectic um, and s my children are getting a little bit too old that they don't want to be uh, seen on the float, but I have a great time. I mean, it's a wonderful time, and so thank you for that, for those memories that you all have helped us create with our families. Mr. Blutter. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm so glad to see that we got a lot of talent in that department. 
you are just did an outstanding job. I was able to analyze, absorb the whole flow. So thank you. Gracias por hacer un buen, excelente trabajo. Hay mucho talento y felicidades. Yes. Thank, thank you for the amazing float. I had never really seen anything like it, and it was it was a sight. Mr. Perez. Um, yes, sir. I, I mean, I, it was it was something that uh, I felt was very important for for our employees to be here to be recognized because, in in reality, it's it's something that was done within a two week period, and to come up with some such an amazing float, um, you know, it's it's very very impressive and and proud to have them as part of the City of Mission uh, Parks and Recreation Department that. You know, we have we have the the talent and the and the uh, creativity because basically they uh, cre recreated the float out of a picture, and so um, you know that's that's amazing work. And and to 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 get it done in such a, a short period of time, again, thank you all, and we appreciate y'all uh, being part of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. In in a final note, uh, Brazil has SpaceX. And we have the Parks and Recreation Department. Thank you. <laughs> now I will call for a regular meeting agenda item unless there's another citizen's participation that we have. have Maria Esther Salinas. Maria Esther Salinas, your name and your address for the record, please. Thank you. And good evening. Maria Esther Pena Salinas. Right now I'm representing my acres, 3318 Compton Drive. First of all, I want to thank you all for considering the all-inclusion park. That was a great meeting. It's long overdue. We have a lot of citizens who have children or young adults with special needs. and something I've been advocating for my grandson, Zoe, and he says, Grandma, I'm not a kid anymore. That way, no, a young adult. <laughs> you know, so it's for everybody. A park is for everybody. It's an outdoor leisure time, recreational activity, not just focused on children. And because the Valley, especially Edinburgh, Mission, and McAllen, have stats designating uh, obesity to have these outdoor areas is phenomenal. Number two, I keep reading in all the papers, and I have them here. I you know we've had a lot of activities these past uh, weeks and uh, about growth and how Mission is very progressive. Um, and there's a lot of growth pains. We have Plan B, thanks to the Texas Citrus. If something went wrong with the a and horses, Plan B was to put them into my acres, which was right there by the staging area, because they are rescue horses. So we had it ready. They need it. They're welcome to use it. But at the same time, we need lights out there. We really need lights. I pay a lot of taxes there. And in the evenings, that's where we have situations. And I know in the past, there was a man who got lost there and died. Not in my acres, <laughs> but around that area. So I would appreciate um, a light in that area. I didn't see it in the standard design manual. But for health and safety and for growth, uh, I know Mr. Brad Benson over there said, well, we need more people out there. No, we don't. <laughs> but uh, that was something I had offered in the past. Let's have it as a park. Uh, part of it for children with special needs, population with special needs, or veterans. But anyway, I do thank you, and it was a tremendous, uh, been a tremendous last month. So I do applaud you all. Thank you, Esther. You're Any other citizens' participation, ma'am? No more? That's it? Thank you, Ms. Hernandez. Regular meeting of uh, uh, agenda item 1.0, the public hearings. So we're going to call for public hearing 1.0A, Mr. Acevedo. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Item 1.1A is a public hearing for a conditional use permit for a home occupation. This is for a beauty salon at 317 South Holland Avenue, being lot 5 of Block 7, Erdahl Subdivision. The property is owned R1, and Gloria Hernandez is the applicant. And if the Council is inclined to approve this conditional use permit, it would require the adoption of an ordinance. On January 8, 2020, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing to consider this conditional use permit request. The subject site is located 200 feet south of Leal along the east side of Holland Road. The applicant is proposing a two-chair salon from her residence. All the customers would be by appointment only. And there is a uh, 
big parking lot, or not parking area, but driveway that's uh, big enough to accommodate four cars. Uh, Ms. Hernandez has uh, installed a, a shed or converted a shed into the salon. In talking to Ms. Hernandez, uh, she was a business owner in the mission area. However, her husband has fallen ill and to assist him with his health needs, <clears throat> she has um, converted a storage unit into the uh, hair salon where, where she will be taking people in by appointment only. The hours of operation will be Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And Ms. Hernandez will be the only one that will be operating the hair salon. There was no public opposition during the PNZ meeting. The board unanimously recommended approval. Staff is recommending approval subject to a one year reevaluation and to compliance with all the home occupation codes. Our city manager is also recommending approval. This is a public hearing. Item 1.1A is now before you. Thank you, Mr. Toledo. This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor against the conditional use permit? This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor or against the conditional use permit? This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor or against this conditional use permit? I do not see anybody approaching the, the podium. Therefore, I'm going to close the public hearing and I'm going to open it for any of the council members if they have any specific questions. We have a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a second to approve Ordinance 4880. 4880. Uh, this is open it for final discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. A motion carries, and I call for 1.0B. Thank you, Mayor Council. Item 1.1B is a public hearing for a conditional use permit for the sale and outside consumption of alcoholic beverages at Taqueria El Sarape. The address is 2423 East Expressway 83, being Suite 100 of Lot 2, Block A, Sherry Taylor Expressway Commercial Subdivision. The property is owned C4, heavy commercial, and the applicant is Taqueria El Sarape. And if the council is inclined to approve this conditional use permit, it would require the adoption of an ordinance. On January 8, 2020, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing to consider this conditional use permit. The subject site is located approximately a quarter mile east of Sherry Road along the north side of the frontage road of Expressway 83. The last time this conditional use permit was approved was in November 13th of 2018. And uh, it was approved for a period of 14 months uh, to be in line with the TABC permit. The hours of operation are from 7 a.m. to midnight, Monday through Sunday. And a total of 20 employees man and operate this operation. It is noted that there are no churches or schools within 300 feet of the restaurant, nor, there, nor have there been any comments in favor or against this request. We have also not received any um, phone calls related to the sale of alcohol from our PD department. There was no public opposition during the PNZ meeting. The board unanimously recommended approval. Staff is recommending approval for a period of four years, at which time the applicant will renew their TABC license and conditional use permit. City manager is also recommending approval. This is a public hearing. Item 1.1B is now before you. This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor or against this conditional use permit renewal? This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor or against this conditional use permit renewal? This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor or against the conditional use permit renewal? I do not see anybody approaching the podium, therefore I'm going to close this public hearing and open it for the council for any specific information. I'll make a motion. We have a motion. Do I hear a second? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Ordinance 4881 is approved. Mr. Saavedo, and I'm calling for 1.0C. Thank you, Mayor and Council. 1.1C is a public hearing for a conditional use permit for the Texas Citrus Fiesta Carnival, which was at 7.8 four acres out of lot 25-6, West Edition and Sherryland Subdivision, and lot one of North Star Plaza. The property is zoned AOI and C3, and uh, the event uh, took place January the 13th through the 26th. And again, this is for the Texas Citrus Festival, and if the council is inclined to approve this conditional use permit, it would require the adoption of an ordinance. We did meet with the planning and zoning on January the 22nd, at which time this item was approved unanimously. There was no opposition. Staff and city manager recommending approval. Item 1.1C is now before you. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor or against this conditional use permit? This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor or against this conditional use permit? This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor or against this conditional use permit? 
Is this a public hearing? Anybody in favor or against this conditional use permit? I do not see anybody approaching the podium, therefore I'm going to close this uh, public hearing and open it for any of the council members. We, we have a motion to approve and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. A motion carries ordinance 4882 is approved, Mr. Acevedo, and I'm calling for 1.0D. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Item 1.1D is a public hearing for discussion and action to amend the Planning and Zoning Commission bylaws. On January 22nd, 2020, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing to consider the following amendment to the Planning and Zoning Commission bylaws. What uh, we are proposing, Mayor and Council, is to add one alternate uh, to the board. And uh, this alternate would have uh, full voting privileges should there be an absent uh, member on that particular meeting date. Although we did not have to cancel any meetings in 2019, we had a couple of close calls. So uh, we do have alternates on other boards. So I'm proposing the similar uh, feature, I guess, to the Planning and Zoning Commission Board. Our staff is recommending approval, as is our city manager. This is a public hearing. Item 1.1D is now before you. This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor or against uh, amending the Planning and Zoning Constitution Commission bylaws? This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor or against amending the Planning and Zoning Commission bylaws? This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor or against amending the Planning and Zoning Commission bylaws? I don't see anybody approaching the, the podium. Therefore, I'm going to close this public hearing and open it for the council. For any, we have a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? second? We have a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Uh, motion carries. Item D, the, the Planning and Zoning Commission bylaws are amended, sir. Mr. Acevedo, and calling for 1.0 E. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Item 1.1 E is a public hearing adopting a, an ordinance amendment um, amending Appendix A of the zoning Article 13, exceptions and modifications of its code of ordinances. And uh, the section that we're seeking to uh, amend is Section 1.592F. And this section has to do with uh, exterior carports in single-family residences. One of the things that we noted in doing uh, some code enforcement sweeps in the uh, west side of Mission was that there were a lot of homes that were in violation of the carport ordinance. And uh, what we're seeking to do is we're seeking to come up with a compromise where people can have an alternative uh, under certain conditions. And the conditions that we came up with, which were approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission on January the 22nd, were the following. The carport shall remain open and not be enclosed. That the carport shall be constructed over a concrete or asphalt service, surface. That the construction materials match the primary home's aesthetics and general, general overall dimensions. That the minimum front setback be eight feet. Uh, the overhang can extend further, but uh, the last supporting column should be no more than eight feet. The, that the minimum depth for the side setback should be no more than four feet. Again, while the overhang could extend, uh, we're seeking that the supporting column be no more than four feet away from the property line. The minimum depth for the rear setback remains at 10 feet, and the minimum depth for a corner side setback remains at 10 feet as well. In general, if a carport is less than five feet from the property line, the nearest wall parallel to the property line will need to be fire rated. Uh, most of this can be accomplished by uh, constructing a metallic structure. So uh, that's also a condition. Uh, we're also recommending that the house or residence um, be at least 20 years old. Uh, this was something that we looked at and we felt that if you put this in a newer subdivision, uh, it might not go well with the aesthetics of a brand new subdivision. So this would apply only to older subdivisions, 20 years or older. And also in areas where there's um, HOA rules, uh, the HOA consideration is required prior to any building permit issuance. There was no public opposition. Uh, we did present several different options to the Planning and Zoning Commission at various different setbacks, and the consensus was that they, they like the, uh, the carport at eight feet from the property line and four feet from the sides. Staff and city manager recommending approval. This is a public hearing. Item 1.1 E is now before you. This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor of uh, what Mr. Acevedo said? <laughs> or against what Mr. Acevedo said? 
This is a public hearing, and if you want to give us feedback on the modification and the exemptions, Mr. Acevedo said. Or against them, either way. This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor or against this uh, amending the modifications or extensions? There be no. But I don't see anybody approaching the podium. Therefore, uh, I will uh, close the public hearing and open it for the council for any questions. I think this is something that would help us beautify our city. You know, keeping it clean. I mean, having the abandoned. I mean, I think if it's based on that, I'll recommend that we approve it. Yes. I move for approval. We have a motion on the floor. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Uh, motion carries. Uh, ordinance 4883 is approved. Uh, Mr. Acevedo, and I'm calling for 1.0F. Thank you, Mayor Council. Item 1.1F is a public hearing for discussion and action to rescind Article F. This is the article that has to do with junked and abandoned vehicles and adopting the transportation code section 683 subchapter A through E. Basically, Mayor and Council, what we're doing here is we're adopting the state law with regards to junked vehicles in its entirety. Uh, we did leave one component of our current um, ordinance. The current ordinance allows a property owner that has a junked vehicle on the property to cover it up with a car cover. It has to be a specific car cover. It can't be a blue tarp. So we felt that to help the citizens of Mission and to also keep Mission beautiful, we wanted to leave that in there to give some of our property owners that option. Um, other options are to put it in your backyard uh, away from public view, but um, the option that Mission has uh, implemented for the past several years has worked where a property owner is allowed to go to um, AutoZone and buy a specific car cover and cover their cars and keep them on the property. So um, what this uh, res rescinding does is just adopt the state ordinance in its entirety with the exception of the carport or the car cover option that we've had here in the city for the past several years. There was no public opposition during the PNZ meeting. The board unanimously recommended approval of this amendment a staff and city manager recommending approval. This is a public hearing. Item 1.1F is now before you. This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor against rescinding the section of Article 5 of the Planning and Zoning Code? This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor against rescinding the section of, of Article 5 of the Planning and Zoning co Code? This is a public hearing. Anybody in favor or against rescinding the section of Article 5 of the Planning and Zoning Code? I don't see anybody approaching the podium. Therefore, I'm going to close this public hearing and open it for any of the council members to see if uh, any questions or any concerns. Mayor, it's also adopted in its perpetuity, so any changes in the future that the code does will apply here. You, what you're saying is the state changes, not our planning and zoning. No, if the state changes their statute, it applies to us. Okay, so we don't have to bring it back. Okay, thank you for that point. Is there a motion on the floor? I'll make a motion. We have a motion and a second to to adopt the rescinded section of Article 5 of the planning and zoning with the stipulation of what our uh, city attorney stated all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries, and um, ordinance 4884 is adopted, Mr. Acevedo. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And I'm calling for 2.0, which is consent agenda. I want to remind the council that you can pull any item out at, the re at your request. Just give me the item, the agenda item number, and we'll pull it out. But consent agenda item is 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. 2.4 includes a resolution and resolution number 1635, also 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, 2.10, and 2.11 as published. What is the wish of the council? I move to approve the consent agenda. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda as, as is. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a second. Anybody wants to pull one out before? No. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. 
Motion carries and all items are approved under 2.1 up to 2.11 to include resolutions 1635. Now I move to 3.0, which is approval and authorizations, and I call for 3.1, and we're going to ask Ms. Vela to do the, you have the floor, ma'am. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. Item 3.1 is the approval of the tax collections report for December of 2019. I'm going to go ahead and wait for the projector to... Uh, the green light is blinking and that's standby. There we go. It's coming in. Okay. Here it comes. The total 2019 tax levy for current taxes was $22,906,083.38 and the amount of collections as of December 31st, 2019 was $11,221,973.87, which represents 48.99% of the 2019 tax levy. I'm also going to report the delinquent taxes and the total delinquent tax levy was $2,242,609.01 and the amount of collections as of December 31st was $120,732.85 which represents 5.38% of the total delinquent tax levies. Staff and City Manager recommend approval. I move to approve, Mayor. We have a motion on the floor to approve 3.1. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. A motion carries 3.1 is approved and I'm calling for 3.2, uh, Ms. Vela. Item 3.2 is the approval of the attached budget amendments. We have budget amendments in six funds. In the general fund, we have a budget amendment in the police department, 3,000 in revenues and expenditures to carry over donations from the prior year that were not expensed at September 30th. Um, they were expensed shortly afterwards, so they carried. They, we had to carry over the budget in the new year. And then we have one in the health department, 5,000 reclassification for the addition of kennels in animal control. We also have amendments in the PD state sharing fund and the PD federal sharing fund, $71,863 in the state and 108,766 in the federal. These are expenditures that need to be allocated to expense the remaining fund balance for the 2019-2020 fiscal year. In the Designated Purpose Fund, we have an amendment of 5,000 in revenues and expenditures to allocate funding for the grant awarded by the Walmart Community Grant Fund for the park improvements. In MEDC, we have a total of $547,754 in amendments in revenues and expenditures to allocate funding for an insurance settlement of $42,486 for damages that occurred for the seed building, a grant from CS for All, Computer Science for All of 15000 to be used to provide inclusive access to computer science education and a grant from the Texas Workforce Commission, $490,268 that will be used for the Project Cyber Mission Program. NEDC Board approved these amendments on January 21, 2020. And finally, in the 2018 CO Bond Fund, we have $1,125,725 in amendments to for expenditures to repair the bandwidth pool and the replacement of the library and museum roofs. Staff and city manager recommend approval. I move to approve. We have a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. A motion carries 3.2 is approved and I'm calling for 3.3. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Vela. Uh, we're going to ask me, to, Mr. Gutierrez, uh, you, have the, you have the floor, sir. Thank you. Item 3.3, authorized purchase of one um, 2019 period built 520 refuse truck. We have by board contract number 601-19 for the city sanitation department. Truck will be used for the sanitation department. Estimated cost 293,890.17 cents. Staff and city manager recommend approval. Move for approval, Mayor. We have a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries, 3.3 is approved, Mr. Gutierrez, and I'm calling for 3.4. Uh, 
in the absence of Ms. Carrillo, I'm going to ask Mr. Hernandez to, to present the board appointments. Thank you, Ms. Hernandez. Yes, hello. Good afternoon, Mayor Council. Board appointments, uh, citizens participation, I mean, I'm sorry. 3.4 is board appointments, citizens advisory committee and downtown revitalization committee. We have mayor's recommendation, citizens advisory, advisory committee appoint Virginia Alanis Cárdenas to the Southwest vacant position. Can Down you approach the podium, ma'am? So the public uh, will be able to see you on the on our live Facebook who, who we are appointing. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Carden. Downtown Re Revitalization Committee, we, we appoint uh, to appoint Vanessa Navarro de Frito to the vacant position. Staff and city manager audience, recommended. So she must not be here. I don't see her, right? Do you, anybody see her, Ms. Brito? No? Yes, okay. she's back there. She's back there. Ms. Brito, uh, no, no, you. Pásele para enfrente. Staff and city manager recommend approval. Okay. Move for approval, Mayor. We have a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a motion and a second um, and further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All, all those opposed, same sign. Um, motion carries. Uh, Ms. Brito and Ms. Cardenas, uh, uh, as distinct as both uh, boards are, but they're very valuable to our city. Our downtown is very valuable to our city that we need to revitalize and our citizens advisory committee on the southwest part uh, needs to be well represented and we've always had we've always had trouble with vacancies and um, I know you're going to step up to the plate you I know that you have been out of mission for a, for a while and welcome back but I know where your heart is Thank you. I've known you for many years and and uh, and I know that uh, you will uh, take care of the southwest and that's what we're looking for Y muchas gracias por stepping up to the plate, both of you, okay? Pásale para enfrente, para acá, para un foto. Now I will call for 3.5, uh, Mr. Cardoza. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, item 3.5. The Office of Emergency Management is seeking authorization for the city manager to execute and extend the 911 backup contract with Alcoa County EMS to provide emergency mobile intensive care unit backup ambulance services for the general public in the city of Mission through December 31st, 2020. Staff and city manager are recommending approval. I'll make a motion. We have a motion to approve 3.5. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Uh, motion carries. 3.5 is approved. Mr. Cardoso, thank, thank you me. very much. And then we're calling for 3.6. Uh, Chief. Good evening, Mayor City Council. Item 3.6 is approval of an ordinance providing for four four-way stop intersection at Christie Drive and Mark Place. The Mission Police Department received a request for a four-way stop intersection at Christie and Mark Place inside Heritage Square. The request is due to increase vehicular traffic inside the park. The intersection in question is the main intersection at the park that is next to their hall and where the majority of the residents residing on the north end of the park walk across to get to the hall. The Homeowners Association of Heritage Square met on January the 20th, 2020 and recommended the placing of the four-way stop intersection that was then proposed to the uh, City Mission Traffic Safety Committee. The committee approved it as well. Staff and city manager recommend approval for this four-way stop intersection. 
Move to approve. We have a motion and a second to approve Ordinance 4885. Yes. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. A uh, motion carries Ordinance 4885 is approved, Chief, and I'm calling for 3.7, Chief. Item 3.7 is approval of a pedestrian crosswalk at the 1000 block of North Stewart Road. The Mission Police Department received a request for a pedestrian crosswalk at the 1000 block of North Stewart Road. The request is by the management of Mission Bell and Trade Winds Vacation Home and RV Resort for residents so that they can tra traverse between the two parks. On January 21st, 2020, the Traffic Safety Committee reviewed the concerns. It did not recommend the placing of the pedestrian crosswalk. The city uh, mission engineer, uh, streets director, and I will be working with the park residents to address their concerns and to find an alternate solution to the aforementioned problem with that crosswalk. Staff and city manager recommend denial of this item. I move to approve that request to, to deny we have a motion and, and a second to request the, the denial. Yeah, I just want to let the council know that uh, that you do have the option to override the uh, the the request of the safety committee if you so choose that uh, that a crosswalk be uh, be provided in Stewart Road. You know. So well, you'll be working for alternatives, right? Well, we're going to work on alternatives. The concerns are that they, they want the, the crosswalk in the middle of the street. Crosswalks are usually at cross intersections. Um, if we were to do that, liability comes with it, uh, lighting, uh, warning signs on both sides, and then you run that risk that it's not um, the traveling public is not used to that. Traveling public and, uh, is used to those being at cross intersections. And in this case, they want it in the middle to make sure that residents can cross from one side uh, to another off the store road. And that's our concern, um, both from our, our city engineer, myself, and our streets director as well. Um, so we did all come up with an alternative for them. Um, Obviously, uh, those, it's going to take a while because it's about increasing the sidewalks. They end right before you get to the right of way of Rio Grande switching and also tech stop property. So that is, you know, a hurdle we need to get over. And the other problem associated with it is the fact that they would need to walk like 450 feet to get to the crosswalk to then cross and then walk back to get to the other side of whatever port they want to go to, whether they're going to Trade Winds or Mission Bell Resort. And, um, uh, we're having a meeting with uh, uh, Rio Grande Switching uh, this week, and we'll, we're going to bring it up to their okay. to see if they give us the authorization to be able right. to and, and go sidewalks. And just your, like you mentioned, Mayor, you have that option. Uh, the, uh, the only uh, situation that if we do adopt at a city you know, there's a lot of safety concerns that I would have in the city engineer, but, you know, if you do, it's just about putting lighting, warning signs, and, you know, uh, but at this time, we're, we're recommending, and obviously... Is, uh, is this the first one like this, or have, do we have others in the city? Well, as far as requests to my office, uh, from the, as far as the traffic safety coordinator, um, I remember uh, one that was placed, I believe, between the Latin, East, uh, Latin VS East and West. Um, that, uh, the, the thing of it is that particular one, I think that we did place it. Uh, the only thing with that one, obviously far away from both intersections of the Furniture Road and Business 83, where the people crossing have enough time to to view traffic coming back and forth. One of the concerns that they expressed in our meeting was the fact that as traffic turns right off of Business 83, they accelerate and they're right there. So that's our concern in trying to do the same thing there, that traffic, as soon as they turn off uh, Business 83 onto Stewart, um, are accelerating. And that's, you know, that's why they want this crosswalk. Of course, you know, I told them that we would do some patrolling, more patrolling in the area. Uh, and that's a concern of also putting it there. It's very close to Business 83 as well. Any other questions? All those in favor for the denial? Aye. Signal by saying aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Uh, the denial is approved, uh, Chief. Mayor, I just want to, I have a comment for that. Go ahead. Uh, Chief, would it be possible maybe just to um, get a hold of other municipalities and see if they have a similar situation that they may have worked on in the past and see if we can work together to come yes, to some uh, conclusion to this? Right. No, areas. and we did tell them that we're going to work with them. Uh, Roberto was going to look at different <laughs> signage that we can put out there. Um, we just want to be very careful with what signs we put as well. Mm -hmm. If we put like a pedestrian exiting or be careful with pedestrians, we're inviting and it was the crossing. And we just, from the liability standpoint, we need to be very careful with that. But yes, we will do that as far as checking with our municipalities. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I will call uh, agenda item 3.9, Chief Dominguez. 3.8, 3.8? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Um, Mayor, City Council, item 3.8 is approval of an ordinance providing for a no parking zone at any time on the south side of the 2200 block of Summer Breeze, extending west 179 feet from Sherry Road along the south side of the roadway. The City Mission Planning Department, in the course of authorizing the, the development of the 494 Commercial Plaza, located on the southwest corner of Summer Breeze and Cherry Road, and with the concurrence of the residents of the 2200 block of Summer Breeze, recommended the placing of a no parking zone at any time on the north, on the north side of the business plaza. On January 21st, 2020, the Traffic Safety Committee met and discussed a no parking zone request at the af aforementioned location. It is a recommendation of the Traffic Safety Committee to adopt this ordinance. Staff and city manager are recommending approval. Do I have a motion to approve? I move to approve. Do I have a second? Second. We have a second to approve uh, Ordinance 4886. I, this I open it for discussion. Is this the plaza on Sherry Road and right on the south? West. That's where you had Southeast. a lot of the residents come through. And I believe that was one of the concessions to yes. that situation. Yes, sir. Turned out to be beautiful. Yes, that's a beautiful plaza. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, ordinance 4886 is approved, Chief, and uh, now I can call it 3.9. Item 3.9 is approved, an ordinance providing for a three way stop intersection at Holland Avenue and Barn Street. The request is due to vehicular traffic coming onto the property located at 801 Barnes. A review of our records management system found two reports that have been filed with our department. One was in 2004 and one in 2011 where a mailbox and a fence were struck by motor vehicles. There are no other accidents reported since 2011 at the said location. On January 21st, 2020, the Traffic Safety Committee reviewed the request for a three-way stop intersection and recommended against the placing of the uh, three-way stop intersection. Uh, today, I did go and make contact uh, with Mr. and Mrs. Rodriguez, Renato Rodriguez, are the owners of that house there at the corner at 801 Barnes. Um, I, uh, they've been living there since 2017. That's when they bought the property and obviously they refurbished the house. Um, the, the accidents they were talking about were the previous accidents in 2004 and 2011. They told me that they had, have not had any issues. Their concern is still the fact that there's a lot of accidents that happen in the intersection and they're concerned of it coming onto their property one day. I did tell them that I would work with them uh, and with our traffic engineer to see what we can do uh, for that particular area and how we can slow traffic down. Um, however, at this time, staff and the city manager recommend to deny the request for the stop sign. And that's, again, the traffic safety uh, committee also is de uh, denied it as well. The item is before you for your review. Mayor, I have a question for the chief. Well, okay, go ahead. Make a motion. Um, uh, Chief, is there any way that maybe we can begin like a pilot program? Because I know they're on Holland. They have those blinking lights on the opposite side. Um, and I have been there, gone, I've been through there because of the elementary school and the high school being there. So I can see the congestion and the safety that maybe these residents have mm -hmm. um, in the morning and maybe in the after, after school time when people are picking up their children. Um, 
I do think that we need to look more into the concern of this neighborhood and keeping it safe. So instead of denying, is there any way that maybe we can look into some type of temporary signage for to keep to look into that if that would work? To, like a trial and error basis? Yes. You would make it to the traffic committee, but yeah, that could right. just table this or no action. Okay, can we take no, I make a motion for no action. Sure. And I want further review from the traffic committee um, to see if maybe we can address it. I mean, I know. I have a second to the table. Second. We have a second to the table. Now you can discuss, ma'am. Um, some type of pilot program to see if maybe we can um, test it for a while. And then that way we could get the concerns of the residents and then us too. And maybe there's other areas of mission that are going through the same type of situations that we can look to see how we can remedy it. Uh, Mr. Choa, could you clarify your motion? Was it for no action or for tabling? No action, Mayor. You want no action, so yes. you want it to remove from the, and go back, then start from scratch? And have the traffic committee uh, look it over again. Okay. Uh, so you want to resend it back to the traffic safety committee? Yes, Mayor. Okay. So no action word. The but the no action won't be sent it back. It has to be reapplied. that it, it, it revert back to the traffic committee. Okay. So so that would be the, the um, statement. Okay. Have you finished with your comments, so Yeah, we can. Yeah. You understood me. Suela, you yeah. Can. yeah, I just yeah. want the more studies and see if we can see if there, you know, you, people pick up the, their speed and and the yes. residents have been calling on us. Well, I, I would like to tell you that all our residents obey the speed, but, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and that's one of the things that I, that I was... Where do you get that idea, Chief? <laughs> that I was looking at, at just down, you know, like 20 feet from where I was, there's a 20-mile-per-hour zone blinking lights for the, uh, the school there, right, uh, Leo Marcel. Uh, so the zone basically... Basically, from Business 83 to where the school ends and the fence ends, which is Barnes now, it's, it's a 20-mile-per-hour zone during those critical times. Um, and then it turns into 30, and then you have the school zone for Mission High School, and then you have the school zone for um, O'Grady Elementary. Uh, so the speed limit on that roadway goes up and down, but it's from 20 to 30 to 20 and so forth. But you know, the other thing is that you have to take into consideration is that after 5 o'clock and people are going home and so forth, things change. At 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, things change. So That little uh, machine that sometimes I see on Brian when uh, yes. it tells you how fast... We, we can it? put that up there, okay, sir. Okay, just yes, to kind of see what, what the speeds are? Yes, sir. Okay. We'll do that. I just know that uh, from my standpoint, every time that they're, that, you know, that they're dropping off in the morning, you know, uh, and and you make the stop time, stop sign there at Barnes and Holland. It takes a long time to be able to turn left. You know, to turn left. Uh, you know, uh, uh, to turn right, it's quick and fast. But to, but to turn left, like to head on to 495. So I I just I just avoid that area in right. the morning in uh, front when I yes. you know and and uh, and but I you know uh, there's a lot of people that use that corner. And, and one of the things to consider as well, um, if I may, Mr. Mayor and City Council, is the fact that a lot of these wo roadways are main arterial roads that move traffic from one side of the city to the other. Um, you know, as you know, down the street on 18th Street, we put a, a three-way stop intersection. Yeah. And like it's helped, it's also uh, gotten us some, some problems, right? Uh, but we've dealt with them and so forth, and I think, uh, and I think at the time it had to do a lot with the kids going to Yum Yums during lunch hour, but now it's a closed campus, but you still have a lot of kids that still cross the street from that neighborhood to go to the school as well, so. And we also, thanks to Mr. Salinas, uh, they also uh, uh, added uh, sidewalks to that area yes. to make it, make it more safer. For them to, yes. to cross over, but right. sometimes the, our, our our children don't uh, don't, yeah. don't don't follow the crosswalks. Yes. No, and, and just rest assured that I will put uh, Roberto and JP to work hard with me okay. to you. make sure we address both uh, uh, Stuart Road and yes. and this area here as well. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor to go ahead and um, take no action and resend this back to the traffic and safety for further study. Uh, aye. Indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Uh, motion carries. Thanks.
4.0, we have no unfinished business, and uh, 5.0, I will call for city manager's comments. Mr. Perez. Uh, yes, sir, thank you. Uh, I just want to take the time to thank uh, staff, directors, and for this weekend. Uh, it was uh, a full weekend for all of us, uh, and but a uh, very, very nice event. Uh, weather was, was great, and so I want to thank each and every one of you for the hard work and, and time and dedication that, that we did this this weekend. So I appreciate you all for doing that. And it was a, a great, uh, great event. Thank you. And I'm going to pass my uh, mayor's comment to, to David Flores, who I, I know he's going to be caught on the spot if you could come to the podium. So I, I would like to announce what uh, we're going to start planning tomorrow. But we're going to start planning tomorrow at 10 a.m. in the morning so the public will begin to to make plans for what uh, what's coming to the city of Mission, Mr. Flores, and I'm sorry to put you on this spot, but not a problem, Mayor, Mayor, and Council. David Flores, your Deputy City Manager. So we've uh, we've been planning for the uh, the uh, Veterans uh, a Memorial Wall. This is an 80 percent replica of the Vietnam Veteran Wall that that is in is that is in D.C. It is set to arrive on March 11th uh, of of this year. And we're going to meet it, meet the wall, and with an escort up in Falfurias, uh, Texas, where we will uh, partner with the Brooks County veterans and the city of Falfurias to have a small uh, ceremony up there. Then we will escort the wall with uh, some of our local veterans, uh, and then we'll get it all set up, and it'll be viewed for about four days at the Mission Event Center. So we're really excited uh, about this event, and uh, thank you, Mary, for including me in, in the planning process. So uh, it will be displayed for how many days? It will be displayed from the 12th through the 14th. Right. Correct. Thank you. So we, on the 14th, the day of the 14th, it will be up all day long. And that's when we're going to have uh, some, some very special presentations and, and uh, some very special guests at, uh, in remembrance and honor of all of our veterans, those that we've lost, those that are currently serving. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a great, great thing, sir. Thank you for the city. You Thank you, Mr. Flores, for sure. And uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't tell you if you had finished with yours. No, no, it's okay. Uh, go ahead and continue. No, sir. I just I, I didn't want to announce regarding to uh, uh, the Citrus uh, Fiesta Parade as well. As you all know, it was it was historic where we had the uh, Texas A&M Cavalry here, um, and we did receive a call this uh, this morning about being very appreciative of the City of Mission. Um, they were very impressed. Um, never uh, 14 years that they have been doing this. Um, never had they been escorted uh, from uh, uh, on their way in. So they were very uh, uh, appreciative of that. And then also they had never received a reception uh, to welcome them uh, to any city that they had visited. And so they were very appreciative. Um, and I do want to thank the Texas A&M organization that put together the welcome reception as well, but also uh, Mission Police Department and the Sheriff's Office that escorted them from our county line to to here to Mission so they can arrive safely. So I did want to share that information as well. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pettis. Anything else? Yes. I've, uh, I've said enough through Mr. David Flores, so I'll move it over to 5.3. Mr. Vela, we'll start with you. Just wanted to thank uh, the Texas Citrus Festa staff that uh, did a great job, as well as the city staff. Everything was great. Thanks. Good. Yeah, the same here to the Texas Citrus Fiesta. Thank God for the wonderful weather. I think it was great. The, yeah, no rain. So um, Ida, uh, Roxanne, everybody, all the directors, all of the sister city, uh, dignitaries felt very welcome and very appreciative and I'm glad they did some shopping and mission so thank you Ms. Ochoa yes um, I reiterate what council and the mayor says so I'm very appreciative with all the long hours and tedious work that everybody t uh, took to get these festivities on their way uh, it's a tradition that's going to get better and better as the years go on um, and then also what I say at every meeting, um, I think we need to start spreading kindness whenever possible. Um, we just have to um, say something nice to somebody, give them a hug. Uh, that goes a long way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Choi. 
Uh, at this time, I'll entertain the motion to go into executive session pursuant to VTCA Government Code Section 55.001. Is there a motion on the floor? I motion. We have a motion on the floor. Mr. Plata, you second. Thank you very much. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries, and we'll come back as soon as we finish taking care of business. I move to reconvene. Second. We have a motion to reconvene. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. I'll call, call item 6.1A, B, and C, and I will entertain a motion to give the city manager and mayor the authorization to move forward in the negotiation of the purchase of property and authorize an appraisal for each property. Yes. Move for approval, Mayor. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. A motion carries. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We are adjourned.